Hey guys, ready for part two? I hope you are. Alright, our next question here, our first question for part two, is by a blazing storm, and she asks, um, when did, sorry, in what form did the goddess come to you in when she gave you your wake-up call? Or sorry, and when did she give you your wake-up call? Um, it happened on a couple of occasions. Um, first, a little backstory. I had always kind of wondered, being raised in sort of a Catholic environment, or a Christian environment, that, um, semi-Christian, it's very complicated, um, why there wasn't a goddess, and why, um, Yahweh was, like, the one that created everything, and it's like, it just got wrong, you know, women do the, the birthing part, um, so why would a man be doing that? And it's like, is, is God really a hermaphrodite? I got in a lot of trouble for asking that question. Um, and that was the other thing, is, in youth group and in Sunday school, I got in a, tr I got in a lot of trouble for asking questions. Like, I was in, just before I left, uh, the Catholic youth group that I went to as a teenager, um, I was like 13, um, I asked why, you know, why do we have a, a shrine to Mary in the, in the Catholic Church, and why is she so important, or put up in such an important role, when we're only supposed to be worshipping God, and why is Jesus at the front of the altar when we're only supposed to be worshipping God, and aren't we technically worshipping idols by having these things there, and, and then, you know, going on, on like, why, you know, is God a hermaphrodite and all this, and, um, the priest took it very well, but it was very obvious that I wasn't entirely welcome anymore. Yeah. But, eh. Um, so, in any case, I had two really big instances, um, with with the gods, and, well, I've had a lot of them, but the two really big early ones that I can think of off the top of my head, um, were just before my dedication, I had been doing a lot of lucid dreaming, and I had met, um, a spirit guide of mine, who, um, I referred to at the time as the blonde man, and he would, he would guide me through dreams that would help me deal with things that were going along um, at the time, so stuff like he would help me deal with abandonment issues or with, you know, trust issues by kind of putting me through trials um, and things, and they were very, very vivid dreams. I had been practicing a lot of um, astral travel um, and lucid dreaming techniques for a while, so they were very vivid. Like, there's a point where you could taste um, you could feel wind, you could smell, um, all in color, you know, very amazing. Um, apparently when I fly in a dream, I swim. <laughs> but, anyway, so he had, um, told me a couple of nights before that I needed to meet the gods, that it was vital that I meet them, that they wanted me to meet them, but they weren't going to show up until I asked for them. And, you know, until I started seeking them, they weren't going to be around. And so, I kind of sat there and went, well then, I want to meet them. And I went into the, to the dream state asking, generically, the universe, I said, you know, if I'm meant, if, you know, Christianity is what I'm supposed to do, then when I meet deity, it's going to be God, it's going to be Jesus, it's going to be Mary. Um, but if I'm not meant, if Christianity is not what is supposed to help me, and, and that's not the aspect of, of the divine that I need to seek, I need to know who. Who, um, who do I, who do I need to go to? And, you know, who is the divine that I'm assigned to? Who are my gods? It was a very complicated question. I, and I don't remember it exactly. But anyway, I do remember the dream. Very, very vividly. Um, I woke up in an orchard, um, 
in the middle of summer. And I remember it being very warm. You could feel the sun on your skin, kind of thing. Um, and there was a breeze. And I remember waking up at the bottom of a tree. I think it had pears. And I remember waking up and the blonde man being there and going, get up off your ass, you're taking too long, hurry up, they're waiting, you know, you can't, you can't disrespect them, hurry up. Um, and I remember him pretty much dragging me down the road in the middle of this orchard. And the, the, there was all this grass, like lemon grass growing everywhere, and you could smell, um, you could smell the heat of the dirt in the air and the sage in the air, um, in the breeze. And you could smell the apples ripening. And there was all these great big apple trees with like huge I've never seen apples this big, like like this big, golden colored like the like golden delicious style apples. They were colored like golden delicious, but they were the shape of Fuji's. They were very round, gold colored apples like yellow apples, very pale yellow apples. And I remember looking at them going like, what kind of apple is that? I've never seen an apple that looks like this. Is he's dragging me, you know, le like g down this path. And we eventually come up to this procession. And it's all these women, um, and all these men, and they're all, they've all, you know, these women all have like really long hair, and they're all wearing different outfits, um, it looks like, they, it, they all, everybody looks like they had just come from a May Day festival, um, but the, the actual clothing and the, and the people were of all different races and all different creeds, and they were all leading, like, coming from the orchard and leading down this, um, this path, and, you know, I remember thinking, like, oh, odd to see somebody in, in that outfit and blah, 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 but, you know, he was pulling me so hard it was all a blur. And eventually we, we come past this tree, and it, it was weird because it was, it was a great big oak in the middle of this apple orchard, this huge freaking oak. And you know the, the pictures of the oaks were like, they're, they're coming out like this, sorry you know, and there's like all these weird gnarly branches and everything, and like every little kid wants to climb that thing. And so I s we see this tree, and all these people, all these other men and women are kind of going toward it, and they kind of go toward it, and then they kind of disappear. They just kind of keep going toward and disappearing. Like they're kind of joining it. And we get there, and he stops me. We're still standing on the road, and it's sort of like a little path to the tree. And he says, I can't go any further. You have to walk the rest of the way. I can't make you do this. But be respectful and don't be afraid to ask questions. And I remember that being like really weird. Like, what? I'm, I'm allowed to ask a question? What the hell? And he, like, by my shoulders, held me to the front of the path and said, Go. And I remember walking down this path and coming to the tree and there was a woman standing in front of the tree and she was she was amazingly beautiful she had tons of robes on and they were they were not of any one culture like it was it was a mix of uh, all sorts of things um but she had these amazing robes on and she was holding one of the apples in her hand, and she had, like, really long, flowing hair, but it was, it was long and flowing, like, all the way down, but she had part of it tied up in a uh, braid, kind of like a crown around her head, and I remember her having these amazingly, almost abnormally large eyes that were kind of, like, sleepy. Like, if she had, if she opened her eyes all the way, it would be, like, kind of freaky to look at her. But because they were kind of half open, she just looked so amazing. And I remember stepping up and, and, and basically saying hello. 
um, and like, sorry for interrupting. And I remember her coming, like, taking a step toward me and just giving me the biggest hug ever. And it felt, it felt amazing. You could, I could feel, um, the heave of her chest when she breathed. I could feel her arms wrap around me and the warmth that, that she had. I felt like, you know, it was just, it was, I've never received a hug that was so wonderful. It was the best hug ever. Um, and she said, I'm so glad you finally came here. We've been waiting for you for a long time. And when I said we, she went, she kind of stepped beside me. So like she was covering up the tree, now she stepped behind me to show me the tree. And um, a man came out from behind the tree. And he was like, a, it was like, um, it was like the sun was behind the tree. It was so bright. Like I had trouble looking. It was so bright to see. Um, and he came out from behind the tree. And all I can really remember seeing was he had just amazing, he was a beautiful, beautiful man with long, curly, gold hair, like shining like gold, and horns. And I remember just going, who's that? And she goes, oh, that's, that's my other half. And at that point, that's where it kind of cuts off. I don't remember the rest of the dream. I believe I got woken up by something at that point. Um, but it was, it was really amazing. And, um, you know, it's something like, when I think about it now, when I, when I remember it, it's like, I can still remember how wonderful that hug felt. And, and how in awe I was. Um, the other situation where I, I really got a wake-up call from her um, was when I was um, pregnant with my son. Um, I was living in Alberta, and we were living with my ex's grandmother. And she is a... Uh, hardcore televangelist. Um, and so she had insisted that we go with her to her church. It's really a television station, but she insisted we go. And, you know, I was like, ah, okay, we'll go once. You know, see what all the hullabaloo is about. And it was weird. Um, but part of the way through, the um, the preacher is telling about how the Holy Spirit is opening up this hole above the, uh, the station, and you know there's angels present in the building and all this, and like people are fainting and you know all this, and you know I've been standing for quite a while, quite heavily pregnant, um, and all of a sudden I just felt really weak and felt like I was going to puke. And so I sat down, and he's, you know, the preacher's still going off and all this, and I'm like, oh, I don't want this, I don't want this. And I remember hold, I was holding a charm that I had made for protection. And I closed my eyes, and I'm just squeezing, and I'm like, oh, please, you know, please, Mother and Father, please, just help me make it through this. And I remember getting this vision. It was terrifying. Um, well, not terrifying, but, like, it terrifying me in a creative way. And what I saw was, was the goddess's face. And it was like, I mean, it was like my hand now to the camera. It was like this. Like, you know, that whoosh kind of thing. And she just kind of came right into my view. And I could see her face perfectly. And, you know, I knew who it was. And she came into view and said, you need to get out of here. Now. And that was it. It was like, yes, ma'am. Done. Done. Gone. And I literally just turned to them and went, I need to leave. And got up and got out and sat outside in the, in the cold, in the middle, in the middle of frickin' uh, April in Alberta. Sat outside in the cold until everything was done. Um, and meditated and the, my guide had 